Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Friday, September 27th, 2024. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's Word today, as together we grow in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior. Sure. Today we begin with a reading of Psalm 86. Psalm 86, a prayer of David. Listen, Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Protect my life, for I am faithful. You are my God, Savior servant who trusts in you. Be gracious to me, Lord, for I call to you all day long. Bring joy to your servant's life, because I appeal to you, Lord. For you, Lord, are kind and ready to forgive abounding in faithful love to all who call on you. Lord, hear my prayer. Listen to my cries for mercy. I call on you in the day of my distress, for you will answer me. Lord, there is no one like you among the gods, and there are no works like yours. All the nations you have made will come and bow down before you, Lord, and will honor your name. For you are great and perform wonders. You alone are God. Teach me your way, Lord, and I will live by your truth. Give me an undivided mind to fear your name. I will praise you with all my heart, Lord my God, and will honor your name forever. For your faithful love for me is great, and you rescue my life from the depths of Sheol. God, arrogant people have attacked me. A gang of ruthless men intends to kill me. They do not let you guide them. But you, Lord, are a compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger and abounding in faithful love and truth. Turn to me and be gracious to me. Give your servant to give strength, give your strength to your servant. Save the son of your female servant. Show me a sign of your goodness. My enemies will see and be put to shame because you, Lord, have helped and comforted me. Today we're going to read the very end of God's revelation in the Old Testament as we conclude the prophecy of Malachi. Malachi is going to encourage us to place our trust in the Lord and to remain confident in him, even as we approach that great final day of judgment. Because I, the Lord, have not changed, you, descendants of Jacob, have not been destroyed. Since the days of your ancestors, you have turned from my statutes. You have not kept them. Return to me. And I will return to you, says the Lord of armies. Yet you ask, how can we return? Will a man rob God? Yet you are robbing me. How do we rob you, you ask? By not making the payments of the tenth and the contributions. You are suffering under a curse, yet you, the whole nation, are still robbing me. Bring the full tenth into the storehouse, so that there may be food in my house. Test me in this way, says the Lord of armies. See if I will not open the floodgates of heaven and pour out a blessing for you without measure. I will rebuke the devourer for you, so that it will not ruin the produce of your land, and your vine in your field will not fail to produce fruit, says the Lord of armies. Then all the nations will consider you fortunate, for you will be a delightful land, says the Lord of armies. Your words against me are harsh, says the Lord. Yet you ask, what have we spoken against you? You have said, it is useless to serve God. What have we gained by keeping his requirements and walking mournfully before the Lord of armies? So now we consider the arrogant to be fortunate. Not only do those who commit wickedness prosper, they even test God and escape. At that time, those who feared the Lord spoke to one another. The Lord took notice and listened. So a book of remembrance was written before him for those who feared the Lord and had high regard for his name. They will be mine, says the Lord of armies, my own possession on the day I am preparing. 
I will have compassion on them as a man has compassion on his son who serves him. So you will again see the difference between the righteous and the wicked, between one who serves God and one who does not serve him. <clears throat> For look, the day is coming, burning like a furnace, when all the arrogant and everyone who commits wickedness will become stubble. The coming day will consume them, says the Lord of armies, not leaving them root or branches. But for you who fear my name, the sun of righteousness will rise with healing in its wings, and you will go out and playfully jump like calves from the stall. You will trample the wicked, for they will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day I am preparing, says the Lord of armies. Remember the instruction of Moses, my servant, and the statutes and ordinances I commanded him at Horeb for all Israel. Look, I am going to send you the prophet Elijah before the great and ter terrible day of the Lord comes, and he will turn the hearts of fathers to their children and the hearts of children to their fathers. Otherwise, I will come and strike the land with a curse. Yesterday, we saw how Jesus defeated Satan in the wilderness at the beginning of his ministry. Today, we're going to continue as Jesus does begin now his public ministry, preaching in Galilee, in the city of Capernaum, and starting to gather his first disciples. When he heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew into Galilee. He left Nazareth and went to live in Capernaum by the sea, in the region of Zebulun and Naphtali. This was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. Land of Zebulun and land of Naphtali, along the road by the sea, beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who live in darkness have seen a great light. And for those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. From then on, Jesus began to preach, repent, because the kingdom of heaven is, has come near. As he was walking along the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew, who were casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Follow me, he told them, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately, they left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with Zebedee, their father, preparing their nets, and he called them. Immediately, they left the boat and their father and followed him. Now, Jesus began to go all over Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness among the people. Then the news about him spread throughout Syria. So they brought to him all those who were afflicted, those suffering from various diseases and intense pains, the demon-possessed, the epileptics, and the paralytics, and he healed them. Large crowds followed him from Galilee, the Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and beyond the Jordan. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today. May the Lord richly bless your day. I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.